With me I have Dr. Stuart Bell, who's an expert on religion in the First World War. And I've asked him to explore how the conflict impacted on the lives of ordinary people. It's very hard to know. You cannot delimit the impact of war. But I wonder, could you take a couple of examples and help us to see how it impacted? Sure. Let me tell you about Jack Titterton, a Derbyshire farmer up in the Peak District. He wanted to sign up, um, but get kept being told by the authorities that his job was so important running that farm in Derbyshire um, that he shouldn't. Um, eventually he got his brother to take over the farm, he taught him how to write cheques uh, and eventually went off to war and was shocked really by the whole thing. Um, was so convinced that it was against the teaching of the church um, that he wrote poem after poem after poem saying what is happening here is against um, what I've always understood to be basic Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote his memoirs in the 1960s, 1970s, um, so clearly were affected by what had happened in the previous 40 years. Um, but he speaks of uh, the camaraderie of, of going to war, speaks of meeting a Salvation Army girl in one of the tents, and it really reinforcing all he'd thought before the war about how wrong it was. Mm. Um, it had an immense impact on his life, uh, although he wrote to his girlfriend to Bess, as he called her, uh, throughout the whole campaign. He survived. Um, he, was a, he worked with the Royal Artillery. Um, but it, it, it changed his outlook forever, as his memoirs make quite clear. Because somewhere, uh, uh, one of the themes that you see in many of the memoirs that are written by, written, written by people who, they weren't professional soldiers, they were either volunteers or conscripts, was that this was the moment when they actually gave up religious belief. Certainly quite a lot of people did, but that is one of the, again, one of the myths of the First World War. Um, if you look at the statistics of church going, they held up very well indeed. Now, belief and church going are not the same, mm -hmm. um, but the evidence is that although we know about the people who said, I could no longer believe, um, the vast, vast majority uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't affect their faith significantly at all. Um, perhaps because um, they didn't relate the issue of faith and what was happening around them. Mm. Um, but it, it did not have a massive impact. And of course there is actually a, um, a basic uh, religious instinct that things can go wrong, but that's because they belong somehow to us religion is still okay because that, that somehow is greater than us. And there is, you know, yeah. it's and, the, and the characterization of A, Germany solely responsible for the war, mm. and B, German having become godless with the rise of militarism. Uh, they just saw the whole thing as a battle of good against evil. And not least because Britain and her allies won, mm that substantiated all that they'd said during the war about God being on their side. Had the Allies lost, had Germany won, then the question of what would happen to faith in Britain uh, is a quite, might have produced a quite different answer. Yeah. Hey, you talk about this man, Tiverton. He wrote his memoirs the best part of 50 years later? Yes, yes. Almost, almost on his deathbed. Right. And what is the name of that book? It's not published, it's in the Derbyshire archives. I discovered it doing some research about five or six years ago. My heavens. Um, exercise book after exercise book after exercise book. His poems were written before he signed up uh, and after he signed up, there's one written in France itself, which talks, which uses the metaphor of the, of the destruction of the church uh, as a metaphor for a destruction of faith. So you're, th that's, a, that's a fascinating insight you're actually saying that there is still plenty of new material out there on religion in Britain between 1914 and the 1960s that is completely untapped. I'm not saying there's plenty. I'm saying there might I, be. I searched through the Derbyshire archives for a long, long time and 
this was the nugget. This was the nugget. These are these books of poems written, okay. the original manuscripts. Uh, and then much later, the, uh, the memoirs that he, he wrote towards the end of his life. Well, I think we should just say thank you for coming in. Go off now and produce an edition. Thank you. Thank you.